Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 189 and number 190. Problem number 189, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? It says, find a, find a three digit positive integer such that the sum of his digits is 18. We're looking for a three digit integer whose sum of the digits happens to be 18. We're further told that its unit digit is half of its tens digit. And finally, we are told that the difference between the number itself and the one that is formed when you reverse the digits is 198. The difference between the number and the one formed by reversing its digits is 198. If, if, you, if you've been watching these videos, these pro algebra problems in their proper sequence, you will know that we have done a problem something like this, something very similar to this, many a times. The very, very first one we did was the one that dealt with the two-digit number, that was problem number 65. Then we did number 91, 111, 111, 122, 168, 169, 170, 171, 75, 175, 177, 188, and this is 190 as you can see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have done about a dozen of them. Well, this is the 12th one. If you have watched these videos in the proper sequence, you know how to set it up, you know how to solve it. If you want to give it a shot yourself, I'll give you 5 seconds for you, for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself and then compare your work against the work that we'll do together in a few seconds time. Okay? Here we go. So, as we have learned before many times, the notion of a three-digit number, if you want to express an idea, the notion, the concept of a three-digit number, for example, if our number happens to be 579, let's say, 5 is a 100-digit, 7 is a 10-digit, and 9 is a unit digit. We cannot express a three-digit notion, the concept of a three-digit number, by these three variables written as STU. STU, as we know, in the language of algebra, means the product of the three digits. That's not what we mean. How do we represent the notion, the idea, the concept of a three-digit number, which happens to be 579, if we were to use letter H to represent the 100 digit, T for the 10 digit, U for the unit digit? What does 579 tell us? 579 tells us how many hundreds we have. We have 500, which is why it's called 500, probably. It tells us how many tens we have. We have seven tens. And it tells us how many units we have. We have nine ones. But the problem is, these three quantities are unknown. We do not know how many hundreds we have because it's an unknown number. We're going to have to find it. We do not know how many hundreds we have, so we use letter H for it. We do not know how many tens we have. We do not know that we have seven of them. It's an unknown quantity. We do not know how many units we have. We use we just use letter U. And the expression that we arrive at is we have H number of 100, so it's H times 100. We have T, 10, so it's T times 10. And we have U, 1s, so it's U times 1. And this is how we, express, this is how we pre represent the notion, the idea of a three-digit number in the language of algebra, using an algebraic expression a three-digit number is to be represented as 100 times h plus 10 times t plus 1 times u. We can simplify this thing. We can we can we can represent this thing in a little bit more elegant manner. Instead of writing h times 100, let's let's write this as 100 h. Instead of writing t times 10, let's write it as 10 t. And instead of writing u times 1, it's just u. This is this is our three-digit number. That was the building block. That's the most important concept we need to understand before we can do anything at all with this problem. So if it's, as we can clearly see, we have three unknown quantities here. We have three unknown quantities that we're going to search for. We need to know in, in this we, we need to know in this three-digit number that we're looking for how many hundreds we have. We don't know what the value of h is. We need to know how many tens we have. We do not know how many tens we have. We do not know how many ones we have. 
H, T and U are the three unknown quantities that we are seeking, that we are looking for. And therefore, we will have to have three independent equations. For us to be able to solve for three unknowns, we need to have three independent equations. The question is, what are those three equations going to come from? They're going to come from the problem. Let's see where they are, shall we? Well, the first equation is right here. The sum of the digits, the sum of the digits is 18. Well, that's a very straightforward and simple equation. So our digits are, our digits are, we're using letter H to represent 100 digit. We're representing, we're using letter T to represent the 10 digit. We're using letter U to represent the unit digits. The sum of the digits we are told is 18. That's very straightforward, very simple. That's our first equation. That's our first equation. Where's the second equation? The second equation is right here. The unit digit, unit digit, we are told, the unit digit we are told, the unit digit which we are using letter U to represent, is, is means equal, half of, half of means time, of means times, 10 digit. So there you go, that's our second equation. Unit digit is equal to half of the 10 digit. Now again, if you like, we can write this in a little bit better form. Instead of writing u equals half of t, if you were to bring the two, let's, let's, write, let's not write this in a fancy way. Unit digit is whatever the 10 digit is, it, it is half of that. Unit digit is half of 10 digit. Or if you like, 10 digit is 2 times unit digit. If you were to multiply both sides by 2, the 2 is going away, and it tells us that 10 digit is 2 times unit digit. 10 digit is 2 times unit digit. Where is the third equation? third equation is going to come from here. This is the original number. It says the difference between a number and the one that is formed by reversing the digits is 198. So let's first write the original number. The original number is right here. 100 times h plus 10 times t plus u. This number and the one that you form by reversing the digits, for example here 579, 579 you reverse the digits, whatever is in the unit digit becomes 100 digit, whatever is in a 100 digit becomes a unit digit and 7 just stays 7. That's what we mean by reversing the digits. So whatever, however many hundreds we had, that's how many unit digits we're going to have. However many unit digits we had, that's how many hundreds we're going to have, 100 times u and t is just going to remain t. This is something went wrong. Something went wrong. We have h100. Instead of h100, we're going to have u100. u100. Middle digit stays the same, 10 times t. And unit digit became the 100 digit. 100 digit is going to become unit digit. Are these, are these two quantities equal? The answer of course is no. We were told, I just erased it, we were told that the new, new number that you obtain when you do that happens to be 198. Let me read one more time. The difference between the number and the one formed by reversing the digits is 198. In other words, this new number is 198 less than this number. The new number is 198 less than new number. How can we justify putting an equal sign here. Well, by simply adding 198 to this side. Whatever this quantity is, if you were to add 198 to it, now this quantity is equal to that quantity. Let's work on it. Let's work on this equation and simplify it. So here we have 100u plus 10t plus h plus 198. And here we have 100h 100 edge, 100 edge minus an edge will become 99 edge when we bring the edge over here. Here we have 10 t, or this 10 t and that 10 t appears on both sides of the equation. It appears on both sides of the equation, so it's just going to cancel out. And then here we have, here we have, how can I indicate it? Let's do it with the arrow. Here we have 1 u, and here we have 100 u. So if you were to bring the 100 U on this side, U minus 100 U will become 99 U. 99 U. And that has to equal to 198. 
198, I hope you are able to see right away, is simply 2 times 99. Because 2 times 100 is 200. Instead of 100, we have 99. So it's 2 less than 200. 2 times 100 is not 100. 2 times 100 is 200. Minus 2 would be 198. This is 99, this is 99, this is 2 times 99. Let's divide the entire equation by 99. If we divide the entire equation by 99, we find that h minus u equals 2. That's our third equation. That's our third equation. That's it, we're done. All we have to do is now make the substitution. We need the room, so I'm going to erase this part. All we, can, all we have to do is make the substitution. H minus U is equal to 2. Let's write that as H equals 2. Bring the U to that side. U plus 2. That's our third equation. What was our second equation? The second equation is T equals 2 times U. T equals 2 times U. That's our second equation. That was our first equation. Oh, this is actually very simple. H is being expressed in terms of U. T is being expressed in terms of U. Let's just make the substitution. So H is equal to U plus 2. U plus 2. That comes straight from here. T, we are told, T, T we are told is 2U plus U is just U. Well, this is very simple. We have 1U, we have 2Us, that's 3U, 4Us, 4Us equals 18 minus 2, which is 16. Oh, this is U equals 4. There we go, we are done. Once we, once we find the one digit, the rest is very simple. If U is equal to 4, then T, T happens to be 2 times U, 2 times U is 8. And if U is 2, then the 100 digit is, right here, 100 digit is, 100, right, you can do it right here, 100 digit is U plus 2, U, you know, is 4, so it's 4 plus 2, which is 6. 4 plus 2, which is 6. Right from this equation. That's it, we are done. So what is that number, what is the number that we are claiming that we have found? What is, what is it that, rather, what is it that what we are claiming the number is? What we are claiming is that the 100 digit is 6, 100 digit is 6, so here is our 100 digit, 10 digit, and here digit, we are claiming 100 digit is 6, we are claiming the 10 digit is 8, we are claiming the unit digit is 4. That is your answer. 684 is what we are saying is the number that we were looking for. As far as the problem is concerned, we are done. But as always, we will take a few extra seconds and we will verify our answer. We will make sure that, that that in fact is the right answer. Let's do the verification. For verification, we need room. Where can we do the verification? Let's do it right here. Here is all of this thing. We don't need any of that. And we can verify it right here. Six hundred eighty-four is what we're claiming. As you can clearly see, six plus four, six plus four is ten. Ten plus eight is eighteen. So it is, it passes the first criterion, criterion, not criteria, not the first criteria. Criterion is the singular of criteria. We learned this. We learned this word, criterion, which is singular of criteria. In our vocabulary lessons long time ago, I don't know when, but in one of in one of these vocabulary lessons I remember distinctly talking about this particular word, which is a very common mistake. Many a times I have heard people go around saying the only criteria that we used, well if it's the only one, if it's the only bloody one, is the criterion, not criteria. So the first criterion is satisfied. It, we meet the first criterion, which is the sum of the digit has to be 18, which it does. 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 8 is 18. That's, that's true. We were told further that the unit digit is half of the 10 digit. You can clearly see unit digit is half of the 10 digit. Unit digit is 4, 10 digit is 8. So it meets the second criterion. The third criterion that we were told is that the difference between the original number and the one that you form after, reversing, after you reverse the digit, 100 digit becomes a unit digit, and the unit digit becomes a 100 digit. If you do that, 
then we were told the number that we obtain is 198 less than the original number. Let's see what we get here. 14 minus 6 which is going to be 8 and this will become 7 and this we'll borrow, from, borrow 1 from here. 17 minus 8 is 17 minus 8 is 9. 5 minus 4 is 1. Oh, there you go. It meets, it meets all three criteria which means our answer is indeed correct. I was, about, I was about to put everything away. I thought we were done with it. But we're going to do one more problem, number 190. Okay, just give me a second. Let's do one more, number 190. It says find three, number 190. Find three. Executive numbers such that when they are divided by two, three, and four, respectively. The sum of the the sum of the quotients is forty two is 42. One more time. Find three consecutive numbers such that when they are divided by 2, 3 and 4 respectively the sum of the quotient is 42. Again we have done problem like this many a times. I don't have the numbers in front of me as to which numbers I should have I should have done that ahead of time but I don't have it here. If you want to give it a shot go ahead and do it. I'll give you five seconds so that you can have the unobstructed, unobstructed view and so that you are able to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds time. Okay, here we go. First thing first, we need to first get the terminology out of the way, but first we need to understand the jargon. Quotient. What is the quotient? Quotient is simply a very fancy way of saying the result of a multiplication process, uh, result of a division process. Division process. For example, if you have if you have 14, if you have 14, and if you divide 14 by 2, 14 divided by 2 is 7, and that is called the quotient. That is called the quotient. Quotient is the result of the division process. What we are looking for are three quotients, three quotients such that we divide with that such that we are dividing three consecutive numbers. So the three consecutive numbers is the first one. If you're going to represent the first number as x, since they're consecutive, next one would have to be x plus one. And the one after that would have to be x plus two. And we are told that if these numbers are divided by two, three, and four respectively, in that order, two, three, and four, take the first one divided by two, take the second one divided by three, take the third number, three third consecutive third number in the three consecutive number divided by 4, if you were to do that, we are told that the sum of these coefficients would have to equal 42. There is the equation. All we have to do is simplify, or rather not simplify, rather, all we have to do is solve this simple, all we have to do is solve this very simple linear equations and we'll have our number. That's all. Let's do it, shall we? Well, the very first thing we're going to do here is to make sure that we have the same denominator. We need the common denominator. Here we have a denominator of 2, here we have a denominator of 3, here we have 4, of course they are all different. If we can have the same common denominator, if we can have the same denominator or if we can have a common denominator, then we don't have to worry about looking at the denominator. The denominator will cease to play any role as long as the entire equation is the same denominator. So let's make it, let's make it so, let's make it so, let's give each of these terms the same denominator. Well this one has a denominator, the first term here, has a denominator of 2. What's going to be the least common denominator here? Well, we, all we need is a common denominator. All we need is a common denominator, but it's always a good idea to make sure that that common denominator that you arrive at is in fact the least one. Because 
to lower the number, the less work you will have to do. Hence, hence one looks for not just any old common denominator, but the least common denominator. For example, here, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 4 is 24. 24 will do job, job nicely. 24 will do job nicely. And so will 24 billion. 24 billion would do job nicely as well, and so will 24 trillion. But it'll be a damn silly thing to do. We want the least common denominator, the lowest possible number that we can think of that is evenly divisible by 2, 3, and 4 is 12. We already have 2 here. How can I convert a 2 into a 12? Well, it's very simple. Take this first quantity and multiply top and bottom by 6. There you go. 6 over 6 is 1, so we haven't changed anything. Here we have a denominator of 3. We want a 12, so take this quantity and multiply the top and bottom by 4. This one has a denominator of 4. We want 12. Take the quantity and multiply top and bottom by 3. Now, every, every term on the left hand side has a denominator of 12. We need to have the same denominator on the right hand side. So take your 42 and multiply it by 12 over 12. Now everything has the same denominator. Since in the entire equation has the same denominator, the denominator of 12 here plays no role. It ceases to play a role. It ceases to have any significance. We can ignore the bloody thing. So let's begin. 6 times x is 6x. Six plus 4 times x would be 4x, four, 4 times 1 would be 4, this is an x. Three times x would be three x, and three times two would be six. And here we get forty-two times twelve, which we'll worry about it later. Let's continue. Let's continue this thing on the top. Six plus six plus four is ten. Ten plus three is thirteen. So we get thirteen x plus we have a 4 and we have a 6. 10 equals 42 times 12. Let's find out what 42 times 12 is. 42 times 12, which is actually very simple. 42 times 12, whatever the hell it's going to be, is going to be 420, which represents, 420 represents 10 42s. Listen carefully. 420 represents 10 42s. We don't need 10 42s, we need 12 42s. So we need to add two more 42s to it. Two 42s are 84. 4, 0 is 504. Let's see what we find here. 12 times 2, 12 times 2 is 24. 4, carry 2. 12 4s are 48. 48 plus 2 is 50. You see? So it's 504. Subtract 10 from both sides. Subtract 10 from both sides, and this will become 494. 494, we are almost done. Which means, which means the x must be 494 divided by 13. The question is, how many 13 does 494 have? I don't know. Let's find out, shall we? Let's start with something simple. 494 is what we're looking for, 494. We know, we know 13, we know the 13 times, we know that 13, 13 times 3, we know 13 times 3 is 39, that we do know, don't we? We know 13 times 3 is 39, we do know that, the 13 times 3, 13 times 3 is 39. If 13 times 3 is 39, then 13 times 30, 13 times 30 would have to be 390. Why don't we take away 390 from it so that we have something so that we have something smaller to work with? We end up with 4, 0, or we end up with 104. Now the question is <coughs> how many 13 does 104 have? Well, don't look at me. What the hell are you looking at? How the hell do I know? What are you looking at me for? Let's find out, shall we? What we want to find out is how many 13 104 has. Let's find out. We need the room so we can erase all of this thing. It's very simple. It's very simple. Okay, watch. What we need to understand is that since we are multiplying it by 13, 13 times 1 is will, will have to end in a 3, 13 times 2 will have to end in a 6, 3 times 2 is 6, 13 times 13 times 5 would have to end in a 5, and so on and so forth. Essentially, what we're looking for 
is the table of 3. 3, 6, 9, so forth. So 13 times 13 times 1 will end in a 3, 13 times 2 will end in a 6, 13 times 3 will end in a 9, 13 times 4 will end in a 12, unit digit is 2, then we'll have 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 plus, 8 plus 3 is 11, and 11 plus 3 is 4. There you go, we need a 4, right here. Let's find out how many there were. 2, 4, 6, and 8. This was the 8th one. 2, 4, 6, and 8. 8. 13 times 8. It would have to be. There is no other choice. There is no need to verify it. It would have to be 8 of them. 8, 8 13s are 104. 8 3s are 24. 4 carry 2. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 2 is, you see, 104 right here. But this part was not necessary. And this part would not necessarily, if you are able to see it in your head, as to the fact that 13 times whatever it is, the unit digit simply carries the pattern of the table of 3. There is a table of 3 with the unit digits. This, these are the unit digits. So there are, on the 8th place, on the 8th on the try, on the 8th try, we find the unit digit to be 4. That's your, that's your guy. So what does 104 represent? 104 represents... 104 represents 13, uh, 8 thirteens. Here we have 30, 30 thirteens. Here we have 8 thirteens. In other words, x is 30 plus 8, it is 38. That's all. Let's verify the work, shall we? So, so the three consecutive number, three consecutive number that we are claiming are 38, 39, and 40. That's what we are claiming. That's our, that's our claim. Let's make sure that, that make, let's make sure that we are right. We're going to take two extra seconds at the end to confirm that it is in fact it is in fact the right number. The very first number we are claiming in the three consecutive numbers is 38. As far as the problem is concerned, we are done. The answer is 38, 39, 40. Let's, let's verify, shall we? Problem told us, the problem told us that if you would divide that by two, divide these three numbers by two, three, and four, respectively, we should get 42. Let's see what we actually get. That's what, we, that we, that's what we're supposed to get. 38 divided by 2 is 19. 39 divided by 3, 13. You see, 1 and 3 is 13. Similarly here, 38 divided by 2. How many 2's does 3 have? 3 has 1, 2. The remaining one goes and joins the 8, becomes 18, and 18 has 9 2's. You see, 19. This is 13. And 40 divided by 4, of course, is just 10. 23. 23 plus 10 is, two, rather, 13 plus 10, 13 plus 10 is 23, and 23 plus 20, listen carefully, 23 plus 20 would have been 43, therefore 23 plus 19 would have to be 42. Well, our answer is indeed correct. The three consecutive numbers that we are looking for turn out to be 38, 39, and 40. Today is a, let me just make a very quick comment before I close the video, I was about to close the video. To this problem that we just did here was number 190. For those of you who have been watching this uh, algebra word problem in, their, uh, in the series in, in its entirety, altogether we'll have 200 word problem in the series. Listen very carefully, 200 word problems, this is 190 and we'll have 100 videos. The reason I insisted on doing two problems today is that I wanted to end at 190 because today is our 90th video. This is the 90th video in the series. I will make 10 more videos. We'll have 10 more videos and each of these next 10 videos, video number 91 through 100, will contain only one problem and the, the last 10 videos from 91st video will simply be problem number 191, 192, one problem each video, all the way up to problem number 200. The last 10 videos will each have only one problem. So all together we'll have 100 videos for a sum total of 200 problems. In other words, on average, we have two problems per video. Why not?